appreciated getting getting your resume because you know I thought I knew you pretty well, and then when I read your resume, I realized I didn't know nothing. <laughs> and uh, so, chemical engineer. Mm -hmm. Now I shared this this morning. I said there is no way. She could be a chemical engineer. She got way too much personality. To My son is one too. And then, uh, and then of course, Dave Cripp said she's got way too much personality to be an engineer all together. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, so chemical engineer. Let's see. You worked at you worked at the Goodyear plant, you know, mm -hmm. building tires or whatever. And uh, I guess you worked at a. Is, is that like Purex, the soap factory? The, yes, sir. Uh, well, so do you buy Bleach, Purex? Dishwashing, dry detergent, wash them all. Tell me, you still buy that Purex today? I sure do. All right. <laughs> <laughs> and then, uh, and then uh, jumped over to the dark side and a uh, long, long distinguished job. I know your first job was in an, as an industrial engineer. I was. I was a plant industrial engineer at Purex. And then when I came to the government, I was an industrial engineer. Do you engineer. notice how the, the personality and the industrial engineering piece comes in the thing? <laughs> <laughs> and so, um, uh, let's see. I'll make sure I get all your degrees. Um, you have uh, uh, an MBA. Well, no, MS. And an NMS, mm -hmm. Master of Science in Engineering. Mm -hmm. And then, most recently, an education. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't know when you sleep. Is yeah, I'm going to work my school and my tutoring, and I needed that master stuff. Well, and I, I, just, I work with special kids. Well, this is the part, you know, so, so all of that is obviously extremely important. So I just picked out a couple of things because I was never going to remember everything. And I just thought, this is, this is, you know, we all do important stuff in our jobs. But to me, what we do in our personal life kind of says a lot about who we are. So I just, I lined through some things. President, Board of Directors of Janice Mitchell Isbell Academy. That's a school for special kids. They don't do good in a regular school. They come to my school and I accelerate them to the grade level expectation, and then they go back to their district. So that's pretty special stuff. Mm -hmm. um, president, board and director of Math and Science Academy. That's a tutorial firm. Uh, a lot of times these kids just need something to put the light on, and that's, that's my goal is just, they don't, when I tutor them, they don't be with me long because I'm going to make you know your stuff. And then once they know their stuff, and I met two ladies yesterday who I've tutored both of their kids and they're in college now, so you know I am effective. I have cards. <laughs> <laughs> there is a, virtually a page of combined federal campaign contributions. Um, outstanding parent volunteer, mm -hmm. Nelson High School. Um, Nominated for who's who among young professionals, aspiring young leaders, among women, and the list goes on and on. First place speech contest, yes. club level, international training and communication, mm -hmm. um, a supervisory plaque from the St. Louis Metropolitan Black Employment Program Council Federal Executive Board, St. Louis, Missouri. <laughs> <laughs> Appreciation from the St. John Metropolitan Baptist Church, mm -hmm. from the American Business Women, uh, from the YWCA. Um, now, I don't know about this one. Certificate of Appreciation from the St. Louis Juvenile Detention Center. Is that because they let you out? Or <laughs> <laughs> no, in St. Louis, they have a school that the kids keep going to when they're in, I guess, detention. It's called Grissom School. And myself and another guy I work with, Jim Burgess, we used to always go every, twice a year and we would do personal poise and body language. And we explained to these kids that if you walk and you look like a thug, you ain't nothing but a thug. So if you want people to respect you, you need to walk, look, and act like somebody who deserves respect. And we teach them how to start a journal and stuff like that. And there's some sad things we need to have crying because these are young kids in the system. I mean, really young kids. You know, um I had a couple other things to say. You know, you got an award from the mayor and things like that. But, you know, that's a pretty good, good place to stop. You know, yeah, she's a great engineer. And she's done a great job in the last 10 years supporting the cargo guys and all the sustainment engineering and fleet management stuff. And before that, you know, Kevin carried the stuff that you've done, you know, aid me proper. But, but I will tell you, um, the Lord has blessed you. Yes, he has. Yes, he has. And, um, you know, I read stuff like that, and I frankly, I'm just inspired, and it's, it's, um, I'm just, in, or I'm, I'm honored to be in your presence, because that's, that is pretty, that gum impressive. When I'm sitting here reading through this, I just keep thinking, 
she cannot be doing any more than that. And then I'll read another couple of things. And so I'm just, I'm just so tickled for you. And I know, I know that our Lord and Savior looks down and says, you are doing well. And it's pretty obvious mm -hmm. why he has chosen to heal you after your last little bit of trouble is because mm -hmm. clearly mm -hmm. he has got a lot for you to do. Yes, and he is on this yes. 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 And so, 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 you know, you have, you know, um, uh, you know, Beth Moore has a pretty good, uh, you know, she's got a pretty good ministry. And, and one of the things she says is, you know, you can do make a big difference in the secular world. Mm -hmm. You don't have to be in the ministry right. to make a difference. You can make a big difference in the secular world, and it's, it's pretty obvious you've made a big difference in the secular world. So let's get on to um, letting you get the heck out of this government work so you can dedicate yourself full-time right. to the things that uh, that you're so good at. So let's see. This is the first one, right? Kevin, you want to come up here, Kevin? Yes. Let's do this. Um if y'all wouldn't mind standing. All right now. Hands cupped up right there. <laughs> this is four. This is the uh, Department of the Army, Janice Isbell, Superior Civilian Service Award for Outstanding Performance while wow. serving as a Supervisor Aerospace Engineer for the U.S. Army Aviation Missile Research Development Engineering Center, U.S. Army Research Development Engineering Command. She provided outstanding technical assessment and advice to the program offices and field units with her knowledge of the impact of actions from a safety, readiness, and operational standpoint. Ms. Isbell's achievements and ex exemplary performance are in keeping with the highest traditions of government service and re reflect great credit upon her, the U.S. Army Research Development and Engineering Command, and the Department of the Army, signed Dale Ormond. Oh the goodness. big cheese. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> so congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. I don't have, uh, I should have gotten a little uh, gizmo there. So um, I'm just going to, can I put this through you? Um, you got a little pillow thing there? Mm -hmm. I've thought about all that. All that good God stuff. You're not going to worry about me doing anything weird here. All right. <laughs> there you go. Congratulations. Jane. Thank you so much. All right. Y'all can be seated. So this is what you came over here for. Absolutely. <laughs> Department of the Army. First, I'll read you an appreciation, and then we'll get to the other one. On the occasion of your retirement, I wish to extend to you my personal thanks and the appreciation of the United States Army for the many years of service that you have given to our country. I share your pride in the contributions you have made to the Army, and I trust that you will maintain an active interest in the Army and its objectives during your retirement. You take mm -hmm. with you my very best wishes and those of your fellow employees for happiness and success in the years that lie ahead. Um, I think this might be the last one that he signed, Mr. Eric Edwards. Oh, my goodness. And most importantly, Department of the Army Certificate of Retirement awarded to Miss Janice, 31 January 2014. Thank you so much. Thank you. I just want to say thank you to everybody in this room. You know who you are. Uh, the only way you're going to do good in a job is to have a lot of people who are going to help you. And I've had a lot of people along the way who have helped me get to where I am now. Uh, I was going to tell some things I learned from the group I'm working with now. Like from Larry Harris, I learned one thing I can do in my retirement is go down to the Bahamas and do some deep, deep sea diving, whatever you do with them things. <laughs> <laughs> I learned from Tyser that I have, I, was, I did not know that's what this thing was a deer hunting stand on my property. <laughs> so I see the deer, so my daughter-in-law went and got her uh, uh, license permit, so me and my husband gotta go get ours, get us a rifle and kill some deers. I don't know what to do with them. <laughs> but uh, I don't think about doing that. Then I thought I would think about uh, James Hamilton, and that's just do nothing. <laughs> James is just, you know, James is the kind of person you just ain't gonna ruffle his feathers. You just gonna walk, do his work, be cool. So I say, now that's a good thing to do in your retirement. Just be cool and do nothing. Or I could just, it's a lot of, I've just learned so much from the people I work with. But each of you have touched me. Uh, we have served on about 
that is five boards together. We were so happy when they promoted some more minorities. <laughs> we were so proud of the army. We were like, thank you, Lord. We ain't got, we ain't got to count no more papers in, in, in this place. I just want to thank you for having the supervisor I have now. And I really urged him that whoever he brings in, that that person be like him, compassionate. Mm -hmm. Also, not a micromanager, because the guys that I work with are empowered. They're not at their jobs, and they're good at what they do. So that's the only thing I had asked. But, but he is just a wonderful supervisor. Another thing I like about him, we know my health was um, failing. And every time he wanted to talk to me, he came down to my office. I did not have to walk, whatever that is, one third of a mile. <laughs> <laughs> it is! That building is one third of a mile long. I'm on one end, he on the other end. So I just thank God for that. And um, I thank God that I work with uh, Dave Cripps. I told all the people in my office, I say he's a very per easy person to talk to. Uh, if you want some advice, uh, that's one thing him and Dr. Lewis told us, and I, I told them that they would take that advice. Only you going to take care of you. So if you want to get a promotion, you got to take care of you. Nobody owes you nothing. If you got to get the assignments, you got to do what you got to do. So Dave Cripps is a person I told them to go in and talk to. Fred Banks, another person that I just love dearly, been knowing him since St. Louis, easy person to talk to. If you just want to go in there and cry on his shoulders, <laughs> he ain't got no tissue. Bring no tissue. <laughs> <laughs> but he will let you come in and talk to him. I've been knowing Jeff forever. His wife, I didn't know I knew him, but through his wife, I served on all of her boards, and I got <laughs> went over to Cargo, and I was like, man, I, that's a great lady. Nobody got that name like that. I said, do you know a Jackie Langhock? Lo and behold, she's his husband. So I kind of knew about him already because she had kind of told me about him. <laughs> and the lady back there in the red, that's Sharon Chef. She's one of my road dogs that I've known forever since. <laughs> she and I and Carol, we would hit the road. We know everything about Alabama. If it's a little bit of time to have a meeting in, we've been in it. Between her, me, her, Carol, and my son's wrestling, we know every little road in Alabama. So I just wanted to say thank you to each and every one of you for how you have blessed my life to make me a better person. And the one I cannot forget is Brenda Lewis. My health has been failing for about three years. And this young lady did Jesus. Anything that Larry needs to bring to me or wanted me to come and get she brought to me. And I appreciate that. You never know how good people are to you till you can't do for yourself. Amen. So I really thank God for her, him blessing her in my life. Amen. 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 <laughs> Production, fleet management, and sustainment. Even though it's only one of you, James. <laughs> Y'all keep on doing Everybody what you do. Everybody else is back working. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm talking about James Ness. You know, he's the only one doing sustainment. Just keep on doing what you're doing, James. You just keep the fleet management rolling like you're doing now. You're doing an excellent job, so I don't bother you. Uh, Dennis Ganey, wherever you are over there, keep production rolling. You know your job. Just Whoever comes in, if it is not one of you two, just go ahead on and help them. And be sure and tell them they don't have to micromanage you. You ain't that kind of person. Be up front. Be a little assertive. Call Fred Banks. Call somebody. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I have to say. She's going to start with cake and punch, and then the rest of us can follow. There we go.